Welcome to day 14 of the 30 day mind for SOC analyst challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along with this challenge, I would highly recommend that you pause the video and start from day one, if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you will learn how to create your own SSH brute force alert and dashboard to visualize where these attacks are sourcing from. Let's get started. Now that we have data being ingested from our SSH server into our Elasticsearch instance, the next thing we want to do is start querying for our logs so we can start creating an alert for brute force activity. Before we create our alert, we must first recall what exactly is a brute force attack and visualize what that may look like in our logs. If you do recall in the previous videos, I did go over some of the authentication attempts in our auth.log file. To query our logs, we want to head over to Elastic and click on the hamburger icon and select Discover. Hopefully you should have some data ingested. If not, you might need to go back to the previous videos just to make sure everything is set up correctly. Since we are interested in only our SSH server, I'll click on the agent name on the left hand side and then I will filter for my DFIR dash Linux dash Steven rocks. This right here is my SSH server. To filter for this, I'll click on the plus icon and there you go. Now I have 22,772 events. Your events will be either greater than or less than my events, but as long as you have events, you should be okay. For my time range, I am currently selected for today and that should be okay for now. When it comes to a brute force attack, the first thing that we're looking for are failed authentications because a brute force attack is trying every single combination possible to try and gain unauthorized access into our account. There are a couple of fields that we must be aware of. I'll open up a notepad here and put down failed attempts. We're also interested in the user and we're also interested in the source IP because we want to know where these particular authentication attempts are sourcing from. With that being said, let's first tackle the failed attempts. And to do that, I'll just type in failed and we have 58 events. But if you look at the message, it says add cloud metadata received error failed fetching EC2. That doesn't really tell me anything about authentications. So instead, let's remove the failed query and look at the available fields on the left. Perhaps there is a field that will say, hey, this is an authentication activity. Maybe we can look at event.category. So I'll click on that. And there is no field data for 18,970 sample records. That's okay. What about data set? So we do have metric beat, file beat, syslog, auth. This might be interesting. We also have elastic agent. So let's filter for our auth for the time being. Now we have 4,187 events. I'll expand the first event from the top. Scrolling down, we do have a logged off action and it is coming from our auth.log file path. We are definitely getting closer, but I believe that there are other fields that we can use. So let me go ahead and just remove the system.auth at the top by clicking on the X. And then let's continue on with our available fields. Scrolling down, I do see a system.auth.ssh event, and this looks pretty promising. I'll click on that. And we have failed, invalid, and accepted. Now, if you recall in our PowerShell session, I'll go ahead and open that up. And let me cat out the auth.log. Right here, we do see a failed password for root. And I believe there's also an invalid for an invalid user and an accepted password. So this field system.auth.ssh.event is pretty promising and the one that I'll be using. Let's go ahead and add this field as a column by clicking on this plus button. And notice how there are just dashes. Whenever you see this, it simply means that the field does not exist. What we can do to make this even better is filter where the field value of system.auth.ssh.event exists. So there must be data within this particular field name. To do that, I'll type in system.auth.ssh.event. And then at the bottom, immediately there are two different options that you can select from. The first one, it says equals some value. And then the other one says exist in any form. This is the one that we want to select. I'll hit enter. And now look at that. We're now filtered down to 1,260 events. And we do see failed here. Clicking on the system auth event again, we do have failed, invalid, and accepted. What about the method? The method is password and none. Ooh, there's also command. Okay, yeah, there's no field data for this particular field name. 
there is a user effective name, no field data. What about username at the bottom here? Ooh, root, test, admin, Splunk, test. Okay, nice. So this is the field that I'll be using to track our usernames. I'll add this field as a column. Taking a look at our notepad, currently we have our failed attempts, or at least in our case, we have all of the attempts. We haven't filtered only for failed yet. We do have our user, which is our user.name field, and we do not have a source IP yet. So let's do that. There is a source IP field at the left-hand side. So I'll click on this plus button to add it to a column, and it's right here. And you know what? Let's add in our country name. Might as well. So I'll click on this plus button. And oh, it's coming from China. Nice. We see some from Japan. What else here? Well, if we click on the country name field, we can see United States, China, Singapore, South Korea, Japan. A lot of the attempts are coming from Asia. Now I can highlight failed with my mouse and then click on the plus button as this will filter for only failed attempts. And we have 749 failed attempts. Now that you have your query ready to go, you can start building up your alert. But before we do that, I am going to save this by clicking on save at the top right corner. And let's just say SSH failed activity. I'll click on save. And now we have a saved search. To create an alert, you can click on the alerts tab at the top right corner and then click on create search threshold rule. Now we can name it. As an FYI, this is pretty important. If you're following the giveaway, you must include your handle in any alert name that you create. For example, you can create a test alert saying test-alert-stevenrocks, where Steven Rocks is your handle, aka your username. In my case, I am going to say my dfir-ssh brute force activity dash Steven Rocks. And then at the bottom, we can start seeing our elastic query. The beauty of this is that since we selected alerts from the top and clicked on new alert, our query automatically is placed in here. So as you can see, we have define your query and this is it. We're also filtered for the agent name and where the SSH event is failed. When it comes to thresholds, we can set the count to determine the criteria for this particular alert. In other words, we can do something like if there were five failed attempts within five minutes, then we can trigger the alert. And if I were to do that example, I would change is above 1000 to five. So greater than five. And for the last five minutes for a brute force activity, because it is automated, it is likely going to be even lower, maybe even one minute. But let's just do for the last five minutes. And then if we scroll down, we can click on test query. And it says the query matched zero documents in the last five minutes. But let's just say five days for the time being, just to test it out, test query. And we see 749 documents in the last five days, meaning that there are 749 events within the last five days. So let's change this back to five minutes since we know that the query works. And we can also set the number of documents to send when the alert triggers. Now, by default, it is set to 100, and I'll just leave it as is. How often do you want this rule to check? Currently, it's set to one minute. We can change this to one hour, 30 minutes, or whatever time duration you want. Let's just say every one minute for now. And that's about it. Now, is this a great alert? Definitely not. But I did want to show you some of the steps that you can take to start creating your own alerts. Let's go ahead and save this rule. And currently there's no actions, but we'll go over actions in a later video. Save rule. And there you go. Now we have our rule created. The next thing we want to do is create a dashboard to visualize where these attacks are sourcing from. To do this, you want to head over to the hamburger icon on the top left and then head over to maps that is under the analytics tab. Now, actually, before I click on that, take a look at this SSH failed activity. Now, do recall that I did save the search. Now it is shown here, so I don't even have to start creating that query. I can just simply click on this and then the query should automatically form for me, which is always a nice thing to have. So let's click on maps. And here it says, filter your data using KQL syntax. All we need to do is rebuild our search query. And if you forgot your search query, again, select your failed activity and then copy out your query. And don't forget about your filters as well. On my notepad, I'll paste in my query. I'll say and agent.name, my dfir-linux 
dash Stephen Rocks and system.auth.ssh.event failed. Let's copy this and make sure it runs successfully here. I'll remove the two filters and perfect. It looks to be pretty good. So I'll copy this query, head back over to maps and we'll paste it in here. So once that's done, you might not see anything right now, but that's okay. What we need to do here is add a layer. So I'll click on layer and we want to pinpoint these activities based on the geolocation that was derived from the source IP. If you scroll down, there are a lot of different options that we can select, but I'll select the choropleth layer. That way it will shade the areas of where the activity is coming from. And now we have two different boundary sources. So if I were to select the EMS boundaries, we can see world countries, administrative regions, or any particular region. Or if we click on points, lines, and polygons from Elasticsearch, we have the indices that was created by Elasticsearch. But what I'll do is select administrative boundaries and select world countries. The join field will be automatically inputted here. For the statistics source, I am going to select the indices that we are using. And to find this out, simply head over to discover. I'll open up a new tab. There is this drop down on the top left. You can see what is currently being selected. And in this case, this particular data view is being used. So if I go over to my maps, I want to make sure that I'm using the same data view. For the join field, now what we're interested in is the geolocation. So I'll type in source. Dot geo and we want the country name. Now it seems that it doesn't like this because the geo country name provides the actual name itself. Whereas the join field, the ISO 3166 wants the abbreviated version of the country name. So the two alphabets and to satisfy that requirement, let's go ahead and remove our source geo country and instead select ISO code. And there you go. Click on add and continue for the layer settings. I'll just leave everything as blank. Now you can change the visibility if you like, but again, I will just leave everything as blank. Click on save. And for the title, I'll say SSH network map. And let's add it to a dashboard. Now, because we haven't created a dashboard yet, I'll simply select new, click on save and go to dashboard. And now we have our beautiful dashboard. I do want to change the name because what we're looking at is actually SSH failed authentications. Click on apply and there you go. Now we can change this to, let's say 30 days just to see and click on refresh. Now there is nothing happening here, but you get the point. And just to make sure our map is updating accordingly, I will change this to last one minute and ooh, four attempts are coming from China. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and save out this dashboard by clicking on save at the top right corner. And for the title, I'll name it as my DFIR dash authentication dash activity. And you know what, just for fun, let's create a SSH successful authentication. To do this, I'll simply click on the three dots and click on duplicate. Now I'll change the title to success, successful. I guess we don't need the network map actually. So I'll just remove that Hit apply and I'll do the same for this one. We do not need the network map and we do need to adjust the query for our SSH successful attempts because again, it is only looking at failed. So let's click on edit and we want this to say success full. I think was it success. Let's go back over to discovery and let's take a look. Scrolling down, we want to go to ssh.event. Currently it has failed. That is because our query let's remove failed and put an asterisk to select all click on SSH event. Ah, it is accepted. Okay. So I'll copy that and let's say accepted. Now we don't see anything that is because of our time range. It is currently set to one minute. I do know that there was a success from us. So we'll do last 90 days just to make sure. And there was one from Canada. Perfect. So we know for sure that this works. I'll save and return. This looks pretty nice. I like it. So now we can change the time frame to 15 minutes. And yeah, there you go. We have only three attempts coming from China and no successful attempts. Nice. Let's save this out. And that's it. We now have an alert and a dashboard. Congratulations. You have successfully created both an alert and dashboard for SSH brute force activity. Now you can be alerted the next time a brute force activity occurs, and you can easily view where these activities are sourcing from. In the next video, 
I'll go over a common service that many organizations use and is commonly abused. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.